Hello, my name is Malte Musa, and in this presentation I want to tell you about the design and a few applications of BlockSci, a blockchain analysis platform that we've built. Let's start with the question, why did we build a blockchain analysis tool in the first place? Blockchains contain an unprecedented research corpus of financial transactions. Bitcoin's blockchain alone contains more than 280 gigabytes of data. This data is interesting and insightful for both scientific analysis and commercial applications, for example, to study user behavior or answer economic questions. Available commercial blockchain analysis tools are often tailored towards specific use cases, such as law enforcement investigations or insights for cryptocurrency traders. However, there was a lack of fast, general-purpose tools suited for scientific analysis. Now, 280 gigabytes for the Bitcoin blockchain sounds like a lot of data, raising the question whether we need to build a distributed system to handle it. But, as it turns out, if we exclude data unnecessary for most scientific analyses, such as transaction signatures, and apply some optimizations and transformations, we can easily fit the core transaction graph into the memory of a single commodity EC2 instance that you can get for under $1,000 per month. And with cloud providers offering instances with up to terabytes of memory, we expect that we can scale vertically for the foreseeable future, allowing us to build a tool that runs on a single machine rather than having to design a distributed system. In building BlockSci, we emphasize three main goals, high performance, useful capabilities for the analyst, and a user-friendly interface. To achieve high performance, we build BlockSci as an in-memory database. By exploiting many domain-specific characteristics of blockchains, such as their append-only nature, we built a system that can analyze the full Bitcoin blockchain in a matter of seconds for typical longitudinal analyses. As for block size capabilities, just supporting the Bitcoin blockchain would limit its usefulness. Thus, our goal was to support a few different blockchains. We also include tools for analysis tests that are common in blockchain research. On the usability front, we offer both a C++ interface for performance-critical analyses and a user-friendly Python interface that allows really anyone who has a bit of Python experience to analyze blockchains. To bring the performance of this interface closer to that of the C++ interface, we've developed a Fluent interface that allows the user to specify advanced queries in Python that are then executed in C++. The first big question that we had to answer was, which blockchains should block size support? There are hundreds of blockchains, some of which differ from Bitcoin in minor ways, some which differ drastically. Supporting too few would limit block size usefulness but supporting too many would make optimizations much harder. We decided to support cryptocurrencies whose transaction graph layout is similar to that of Bitcoin. Cryptocurrencies that make smaller changes to its functionality or design are partially supported. Cryptocurrencies with drastically different designs, such as Ethereum, are not supported. BlockSci consists of two main components, a parser and an analysis library. The first challenge was to design an efficient transformation process that can take the blockchain data from a full node and convert it into an optimized format. Our parser can read data either from the raw block files on disk for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, or from the JSON RPC interface of smaller cryptocurrencies that provide the same API as the Bitcoin Core client. It allows to incrementally update the blockchain works with arbitrary orderings of transactions within blocks, which was important to support Bitcoin Cash, and comes with many other optimizations to make it highly efficient. Martin Platner has also been developing a multi-chain mode that is optimized for parsing and analyzing forked blockchains that share a lot of common history. The parser produces the block side data with a data layout that is optimized for sequential analysis of the transaction graph. A key challenge here was to find a good trade-off between memory efficiency and performance. Based on our own experience with blockchain analysis, we've chosen a layout where the most important data is loaded by default, and data that may only be required in specific analysis is loaded into memory on demand. We deduplicate data of addresses that are being reused, 
even across different address types, and on top of this all, have a few indexes for common lookups, such as outputs that are associated with specific addresses. These optimizations make BlockSci really, really fast. We can analyze the Bitcoin blockchain in a matter of seconds. Using the C++ interface, we can iterate over more than 600,000 blocks, including more than 480 million transactions in 11.3 seconds single-threaded, and much faster using multi-threading, depending on how many cores you have available. The BlockSci analysis library allows for easy interaction with the BlockSci data. As we've designed BlockSci for scientific data analysis, it provides the analyst with a static view upon data that can still be updated on disk. It comes with a MapReduce abstraction, a variety of forensic capabilities such as clustering, coin join detection, and change address heuristics, and it can collect transaction timestamps from a full node. To make working with BlockSci as accessible as possible, we provide a Python interface to analyze the blockchain data. This is especially convenient if you just want to look at a few transactions or addresses. While you can iterate over the blockchain using pure Python, as shown in the first example here, this is much slower than in C++. To bridge this gap, we've also developed a Fluent interface that brings Python interaction closer to the performance of C++. The Fluent interface allows the analyst to specify complex selection criteria in the Python interface, which are then evaluated in C++. For example, if we wanted to find transactions that pay more than 0.1 Bitcoin in transaction fees, we do not need to instantiate Python objects for every transaction on the chain, like in the first example, but can instead specify the query you see at the bottom. This gets computed in C++ and we can retrieve the results, which is much faster. In our paper, we showcase a number of applications for BlockSci that touch upon the security, privacy, and economics of cryptocurrencies. As an example, I briefly go through one of those applications, which are some unfortunate effects of using Bitcoin's multi-signature functionality. Bitcoin's current multi-sig implementation requires the user to specify a list of keys, as well as a threshold of how many of those keys must provide a signature for a transaction to become valid. This provides better security than just a single key, but also exposes potentially sensitive information about changes in these access control structures. Those may, for example, correspond to a company's internal events, such as the loss of a device that stored a key or the departure of an important employee who kept it. We found that there are thousands of transactions every month that potentially exhibit such information leakage, for example, through the transfer between multisig addresses with overlapping but not identical key sets. Because multisig commonly uses a different script type than normal single key use, we can distinguish between the addresses of different users. If, for example, a normal user who uses a single key makes a payment to a company that uses multi-signature wrapped in a script hash address, her wallet will generate two outputs, the actual spend and a change address. Because the change goes back to a normal single address output, it allows us to tell apart the spend from the change output. We found that this may allow to determine the change output in up to 122 million transactions. Finally, we observed a pattern where funds are funneled from one multisig address to another through a regular address, raising concerns about a temporary reduction in security. There are up to a few thousand transactions each month that exhibit this pattern, transferring bitcoins worth millions of US dollars. Besides our own use, BlockSci has also been used by others in the community to research blockchains. We are currently aware of at least nine peer-reviewed articles and six preprints that have used it. It has also been really useful in educational setups, such as workshops or lectures on cryptocurrencies, and has been used as a foundation for more specialized blockchain analysis tools as well. With this, I've come to the end of this brief overview of BlockSci. If I've sparked your interest, I recommend to go read the paper. It has all the details on how we built and optimized it, performance measurements and comparisons against other databases, multi-chain mode that Martin Plotner has been developing, as well as three more interesting applications. So, thank you very much for your interest in BlockSci. Here are a few final links and contact options if you'd like to learn more.